Hi guys, Ben Taylor here, and I'm about to hit you with one of the most obvious statements you've ever heard. Great photographers know how to take great photos. Told you it was obvious. But one way they do this is by telling a story in their photograph. And they do this in a few different ways. They can do this through composition, through what's in the frame, through light, and finally, through colour. Colour is a great way of grabbing the viewer's attention, really pulling them into the photograph. And one way you can do this is by split toning. This enables you to change the colours in the highlights and in the shadows. And this is a great way of changing the way the viewer feels and sees the image. So today I'm going to show you how to split tone in Lightroom. So without further ado, let's jump into the day's tutorial and get started. Okay, so take a few seconds to imagine you're outside on a cold wintry day. You're wrapped up for the elements in a scarf and a coat. Every time you breathe out, you can see your breath dispersed in the air and you can feel the cold biting at your face. What color are you thinking of? Now think of a summer's day. Imagine you can hear the sounds of the birds singing. Imagine you can feel the warmth of the sun in your face and you can hear the sound of the sea lapping over the seashore. What colour are you thinking of now? Colour is a really powerful way of controlling the way the viewer sees and feels about an image. And the photographer has complete control over this. They can either do this with external lighting, or alternatively, they can do this by post-processing in programs like Photoshop and Lightroom. Today, we're going to jump into Lightroom, and I'm going to show you how to do split toning. So let's get into this now. Okay, so let's get started. So this is one of the images that we're gonna be working with today. We're gonna to have two images that we're gonna work with and then images can be downloaded off the description area on my YouTube channel. So just where the video is, go to the description area and then you'll find tutorial pictures. You can download them and then you can join along with me in this tutorial. Okay, so this is the first picture that we're gonna be working with and you wanna make sure that you're in the develop module which is up here. You can press D on your keyboard and that's the shortcut to get to the develop module. We're gonna be focusing on this area here which is split toning. This is gonna enable us to push color into the highlights and to the shadows of the image. And this is gonna really capture the viewer's attention and change the way they see and feel about the image. At the moment, this image is, it's a really nice image. You've got this picture of a woman and she's in like, a, I don't know, like a wooded area. You've got red in the color in the picture, which is giving like a nice summery warm feel. And it's just kind of like a nice feel to the image. Now, using split toning, we can completely change the feeling of this image. So first, let's go along to split toning and see where it is. Split toning can be found here. Remember, that's in the develop module and then come down to your split toning. Just click this and then you can see that this box opens up. Now it's a really basic kind of layout. There's not much for you to see and really kind of learn about. And that's great because it's gonna be easy to make these changes. So first you're kind of seeing highlights here and then you're seeing shadows. In each of these sections, you've got U and saturation. So you can change the color of your highlights and then you can change the intensity of the color, which is the saturation. So let's just give you a quick example. If you click on this rectangle here, this box is gonna open up another box, and then inside this box, you're gonna see lots of different colors. You can then click on these colors to apply them to your highlights. Now, what we're gonna do in this picture is we're gonna change the feel of the picture itself. And obviously we're gonna do this by changing the color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think, I'm gonna add like a blue, kind of a colder color to it. And then we're gonna see if we can transform this image into, I don't know, like a cold wooded feel where it's a bit kind of mysterious and maybe even eerie. So to do that, we're gonna start with our highlights. So I'm gonna click on the highlights here and then I'm gonna start by adding in some blues or teals to add like a colder color into the highlights. So. I'm not gonna over bait this, I'm not gonna bring it all the way up here. I'm gonna bring this down and then just make it quite subtle. 
Now you have the kind of option at any point to change the saturation in this slider. So if I wanted to, I could push this right up and make it a lot more intense. It just happens that I don't want to do that, so I'm going to bring this down to about there. Now let's move on to the shadows. So in the shadows, I'm going to click on this rectangle again, and I think I'm going to add in some, some blues again into the shadows. So we've got this cold, eerie feel in the picture. I'm just going to bring these up a little bit to make it a bit more intense. Remember, you can change this with a saturation slider if you want to change the intensity. So I'm going to leave it at about there. Okay, so now we've got this cold colour. It's almost this wintry, woody feel. And rather than her kind of seeming almost alluring with her glance and her eyes here, it's almost gone to that kind of mysterious area look. It's like, you know, what's she doing in the woods uh, all by herself? She looks a little bit scary. Uh, so at this point now, if I wanted to, I could change the balance of the colours. This is a really handy feature. So with the balance, what this means is you could push the colours towards the shadow colour like this. So we could add in more of the shadow colour or you can bring it down here and add in more of the highlight colour into the image. It just happens that I'm pretty happy with where it was before. Actually, if anything, I'm going to give it a little bit more towards the highlights just so it's not so overbaked. So around about there is looking good. Okay, and that's how you really change the feel of an image. So this is the first example of kind of changing the way you're going to feel about an image. It's really easy to do. All you've got to do is go into each one of these areas, the highlights and the shadows, and choose your colours that you want to change it with. So I want to show you another example now because it's not all about how you feel about the image. It's, all, it's also about how you see the image. And this is a really important factor when you're changing the colour as well. So we've got our second image here, which we're going to move on to. And this is another beautiful image. It reminds me of kind of, I don't know, it's almost like a, a late summery evening feel. You've got this woman here, which is lying down in the foliage here. And she's also kind of, she's got this beautiful skin tone. It's almost like a, an orange skin tone. And you can imagine the sun late on in the evening. It's got them beautiful kind of deep orange color. And it's just lighting up her skin here. So I think that's the look and the feel that we're going to go for in this image. So her skin tones here are a highlight. This is a highlight colour. So we go into the highlights, click on the highlights, and I'm going to use this eyedropper to bring in some oranges like that. That's really nice about there. And then we've got this foliage here this kind of uh, green foliage, which we really want to accentuate. And we're going to do that by adding a bit of that in the shadows. So I'm going to grab a green color like that, and I'm going to leave it about there. Now that's probably a bit too strong of an effect, but remember, all we need to do is change that in saturation. So I'm going to just drag that down slightly to about there. And then the balance, we can now change the balance so it can basically be more of a highlight colour, so it's more of an orange feel or more of a green feel. Or you can leave it right in the middle and you can be happy with that. So in this case, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to push it a little bit more towards the highlights. I'm also going to push up my saturation to add a bit more of that colour in there. And that looks really beautiful. Now, it's really important to look at the before and after in these images when you're making the changes because sometimes you just don't know how far you've taken it. So what I'm going to do here is hit the backslash key. It's a little pro tip there. A backslash key, and that's going to basically give you a preview of the before. So this is the before, and this is the after. We've got that beautiful golden late night or late uh, afternoon summery vibe going on here and it's just really transformed the look of the image. Now there's one thing that is really helpful when you're changing these colours. If this is something that you're learning about now for the first time, then you're probably not going to know which colours go together really well. And Adobe have got this really useful little tool which you can just go and type into Google and find. So let's show you where that is now. This tool can be found just by going into Google. Type in Adobe Color. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to bring up a page where you can click here on Colour Wheel and then it's going to open up Adobe Colour CC. You have this wheel in the middle. You also have these options on the left hand side. The one you want to choose is complementary. This is going to show you a list of complementary colours. You can turn around the wheel and then it's going to show you which colours will kind of suit each other. It's a really simple process and it's going to enable you to learn how to kind of put colours together in your image and really get a nice look. Here you have the teal and orange look which is really really popular. So make sure you use this so you can get a good feeling for how to kind of change the colour in your images. So that tool is really useful and you can use it at any time at all. So the next stage in this would be to really then play around with light, which is another really important factor in telling a story in an image. It just happens that I have a tutorial which I made all about the tone curve. and This is a great tool for changing the light in your image. So I really advise you to go and check that out. You can either do that now, I'll leave a link above um, so you can click on that. Or alternatively, I'll leave a link at the end of the video so you can carry on watching this and then you can watch it then. So split toning is really easy to do and also it's going to benefit your photos. Just make sure you use that Adobe Color Wheel if you're new to this because that's going to show you how that the colors will complement each other and what colors to use to tell a story in your image. You're then going to capture the viewer's attention and this is going to get more people looking at your photos. Now to add to this, if you want to take this up to the next level, you should definitely check out this video over here on Tone Curve. That controls light and contrast and when you add that in with colour you just get the best results. I want to thank you guys for joining me for today's video and if you haven't already hit subscribe, join us here and also whatever you do today guys have an amazing day and I'll see you again really soon.